If you looked carefully at the title of this video and thought to yourself, wow, this video is really going to be very helpful and I'm going to get some tips on how to become more grounded in my daily life, well, you'd be wrong. You'd be wrong. I know I understand how you would get there by seeing the title, but that is not what this video is going to be, unfortunately. That's not how it went down. Well, that was the original intention of the video, but then Things got a bit complicated, let's just simply say it like that. And, you know, I think good intentions is all that counts here. Miro had good intentions. That's that's all that matters. So October has developed into a pretty challenging month. And I sort of knew, I knew, I knew that October was going to be challenging. Aside from making the videos and all the stuff that has to be done around the YouTube channel, I also have a lot of work with the plants. The fall is coming in a lot of chores outside, plants that need to be brought in, etc. And also I have a couple of big sort of events coming up, not to get too deep into those. And I knew it was gonna be a challenging month. I just went into October quite unprepared. I was thinking I was ready, I wasn't. And uh, I, I had a good handle on things there for a couple of hours of October 1st. <laughs> it's fine, that was fine. And then, you know, things started to go pretty badly. And it's just a lot of anxiety and overwhelm that has happened here. I became overwhelmed and when I get overwhelmed, I tend to spiral, I tend to overplan, I tend to just feel very guilty about so many things. I lose sense of reality and what is possible. It's not possible. Darling. You have no idea what's possible. And to give myself some credit here, I did look into some techniques, into some things that can sort of help me stay grounded. And I did it pretty quickly at the beginning of October. Some organizational tips, some organizational tools, and some other tools like, you know, journaling, actual journaling to sort of, you know, brain dump, organize your thoughts to get all of that from your head so it doesn't get all cooked up in here because that's not that's not a good meal that's not a good meal and it was fine but i'm still working on it and if this is something that resonates with you if you are feeling a bit ungrounded or overwhelmed stressed out anxious you're having difficulties with organizing your time or perhaps you know you're having difficulties with this sense of accomplishment or a lack of Hello, it's me. You may want to take a minute to listen to the sponsor of this video, BetterHelp. Whether you have a clinical mental health issue such as depression or anxiety, or if you're simply going through a hard time, therapy can give you tools to manage your life in a different way and to approach your life in a different way. BetterHelp's mission is to make therapy more affordable and more accessible, which I believe is very important because not all of us have access to therapists in our cities. Not all of us have access to good therapists, to affordable therapists, or just to someone who will match you because that is something that is very important. This is where BetterHelp can be of assistance. It is a platform that makes finding a therapist very easy. You just have to fill out a few questions and in as little as few days, you can be matched with a therapist. It is easy to sign up and get matched with a therapist. I have a link in the description for you, betterhelp.com slash basyplants. That is betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash basyplants. Clicking that link helps support me and my channel, but it is also great for you because I got you 10% off of your first month with better help so you can get matched with a therapist and see if therapy is the right choice for you. It is also very important to know that therapy can be a bit like dating, meaning there are plenty of fish in the sea. Is that why all the men put fish in their profile photos? Is that what it means? There is plenty of fish in the sea. Does it mean don't get attached to me? Or there is someone better? What does it mean? I bet I can Google this. I bet someone has figured it out. But anyways, that's not the point of this. <laughs> not the point of this. What I'm trying to say is this is perfectly normal. Not, not the fish photos, not the fish dating photos, not that. It's very normal to not vibe with your first therapist. The benefit of BetterHelp is that if this mismatch happens, it is very easy to switch to a new therapist with no additional costs and you don't have to worry about things like insurance who is in your network and similar things. So if you're struggling, consider online therapy with BetterHelp. Once again, the link is in the description and it is betterhelp.com slash basyplans. That is betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash basyplans. And thank you BetterHelp for supporting my channel and thanks to everyone for, you know, sticking through and listening. Now we can go back to the video. I looked into ways to organize my time. We will talk about perhaps journaling a bit later in the video or we may not talk about it. Maybe I will just make a separate video about that, about 
actual journaling, but I looked into organizing my time and I gotta tell you, I failed on my first week. Not, not, not a little bit. Very, very hard. I failed very, very hard. And out of all the tasks that I set out to do, the only thing that I think I managed to do is record my Hoya tour of the biggest grow tent and edit that video, which is a mandatory watch. It's obligatory because this is a channel where there is no democracy and what I say goes. So if you did not watch that video, click somewhere above my head and it will magically play. Actually, no, wait for this video to end. I don't know what's better. Memorize that, write it down, whatever, or open it in a new tab, open it in a new tab, tabs are great. I always knew that my issue is putting way too many tasks to do in a single day and thinking I can do all of them, and of course when I can't, I get very disappointed, and this is going to sound very silly and very stupid, but I actually realized what is, or what seems to be, my problem. And the problem is very simple. I'm, <laughs> I'm unrealistic, no. Yes, but no. The problem is I sort of see this piece of paper, whether it be in a planner or whether it be just like a sticky note, as an actual representation of my time, which it is not. Let me back up. This is, this is, it's not an actual bullet journal, but it, the method is similar. But anyways, I want to show you my previous week, one of the previous weeks, a lot of the things just did not get done. So it's a lot of the, like these arrows mean that you are moving things. What I plan to do on Wednesday is film the tour of the big tent, write an outline for this video and send it for a review, study Hungarian, which is something that I do, film my Millsbo cabinet as a part of this video, because I have some chores that I need to do there, but also not that, because I have another video that I want to film and it sort of relates to that cabinet and what's happening there. Also film that as well, so kind of film two videos there with the Millsbo cabinet, but also spray the Millsbo cabinet because, well, I have pests. And then water the cabinet and the tents and all the plants. Mm -mm. That's not realistic, and you know why? Because filming the big tent means taking out 130 plants out of the grow tent one by one, untangling them and taking them out and being bent because the tent is two meters tall and so am I. And of course there is the light which is high voltage and you're not supposed to get into it. So I have to take the plants out and always have to bend when I go in so I don't get electrocuted, stuff, whatever. That took like eight or nine hours to film all of that. This was not realistic. And not only did I do this on a Wednesday, I kept doing this throughout the entire week. I was a very realistic, you know, I just, <laughs> how dare I? I just, I put a task on my list that takes like four hours to complete or five hours to complete. And then I dared to add five more, like the audacity and not just five small ones. No, I add like five more tasks that all will take three hours each at least. You have no idea what's possible. Do you, do you see where the problem is? And that's because I have this and I was like, looks empty. What are, what are we gonna do here? This is free time. What are we gonna do here? That's not free time because that's just not how time works. If, if you put a task on paper, it doesn't become smaller. If you write with smaller font, it's not. <laughs> I know this is very obvious, I know. And the issue is, you know, this entire week just fell through and I was opening my planner every single day and I felt worse and worse and worse about myself. And then, you know, I sort of tried again the week after and that week went slightly better because I did a brain dump, you know, all the things that I want to achieve or that I think I should achieve. And then I use this thing that's called the Eisenhower method, which is you basically divide the page into four quadrants and you know, you have your urgent and important tasks, urgent but not important. You have not important or not urgent but important tasks and non-urgent and not important. And we don't do those. This was very difficult for me because I, especially when I'm going through a moment where I'm feeling very overwhelmed, it's very difficult for me to tell what is an important task, what is urgent, what is not urgent. So something like spraying the pests, I put it as not, not urgent but important, but actually it is urgent because fall is coming and I have to spray outside. I cannot spray here inside 
at least not the aeroids because they're so huge I have to take them out and the temperatures are dropping so I cannot do it when it's cold as well but anyways you know I had to just make something that's realistic here the next week went a little bit better I was also very unrealistic because I made an eighth day <laughs> I'm not joking <laughs> I'm not joking I actually wrote what the f uh, it's an eighth day <laughs> I don't know <laughs> Please don't judge me. If you're judging me, how dare you? Anyways, the breakthrough. What I realized is helpful is to start drawing these lines. And you can see here, I'm drawing these lines now and you will see my new week, indicating that this is a task that lasts. It's something that takes an entire day or half of the day. So it's not just a bullet point on the paper and you cannot add more things. This is a task that lasts. And I do really struggle still when I see this empty space. I'm like, so much more can be put in there. So much more can be done. <laughs> this is the new week. And today is Tuesday. It's a new week. And you're not going to get a full week of these plant chores because I've been trying for a whole, not for a whole month, but for two weeks. And we got to, we got to, sort of make a cut here, right? If I keep going, I will just postpone this video indefinitely and it will never be posted. And I do want to post it and I do want to share this. But anyways, new week, new week, new me, right? Every week, new me. It's looking sparse, but all of these tasks, they take a long time. Another thing that I sort of added here to my calendar, to my planner is taking walks every single day. And that's because I have just been, to be quite honest with you, very terrible with that. I mentioned in the previous videos that it's something that I would like to do more. Whether you work in an office or if you work in a home, we don't really move around much. I do move around because I work with plants, of course, all day long, there is always something to do. Still, you know, on days when I edit or when I study, it's a lot of hours just sitting. So I was like, okay, every day we're gonna do an hour walk. When I get overwhelmed, I just, my physical health does not matter. It does not matter. And when you're in your 30s, because I'm 31, I hope that everyone says like, oh my gosh, I thought you were like 25. Because if you say that you were like 40, don't. If you don't sleep well, which I also don't do, I typically end up in bed like 2 or 3 a.m. and I wake up at like 7 ish. It's not great. It's not great. And you know, your body can do this for some time, but then you end up sick, your immunity goes down, you don't feel well, your mental health takes a toll, etc. So I'm trying to sort of fix all of these things. And I gotta tell you, it's pretty challenging because it's a lot of things to fix. It's a lot of sort of bad habits to fix. I think that's why this is taking more time. It's taking me three weeks and, you know, last week was better. It wasn't the most successful, but we're trying again. And I think we need to just forgive ourselves or I'm just going to forgive me. I don't know. Maybe no, no one is struggling with this. Maybe you're all perfect people who don't struggle with this. You have time for everything. You're great and, uh, you know, good for you. Congratulations. How dare you? But I'm not. And I thought that this video would be helpful. Unfortunately, it's not so helpful. I think this video is going to be more like, this is what not to do. Instead of, this is what you should do to feel more grounded. This, is, this video is like, don't do this. These are the traps and don't do them. Anyways, thank you for coming to my TED Talk. We are going to start with some plant chores. I recorded some plant chores last week. I may or may not include that. It is in relation to my aeroids, but we're going to deal today with the Millsville cabinet and the cuttings that I have in there. We're going to change the angles very quickly and possibly the shirt because I don't know. I don't, it feels, I don't feel comfortable. I just, uh, uh. I don't know why my camera is always crooked. Suddenly my tripod just decided not to function properly anymore. <laughs> why are you always crooked? What are you doing? My tripod is against me. As always, something is. We are going to pot, finally, the cuttings that I have been propagating in my Mills bow. So I'm just gonna take all the baggies out. I don't think we will be able to pot all of them. It will depend. I have very limited amount of coconut husk that is buffered. But I'm also trying out some new orchid bark, which is quite expensive. It's like three euros for three liters. It's by Orchid Focus, not sponsored. But I'm gonna try that too. Hopefully all of these are alive. I have not looked at them in a very long time. This one is new, so I don't 
Yeah, that one is not ready. I will check on it though. Ooh, this is a mess. I'm going to be potting them in plastic cups, see-through plastic cups. This one is cracked, of course. This one is dented. You know, I'm gonna try to hack self-watering here. And these have like a thick, wide bottom. And who doesn't love a thick bottom? <laughs> Why can't you find a date then? Anyways, let's see here what's up. I'm gonna take out these first. These have been here for a long time. I have Hoya Art Notiana, I believe this is. If I get some of the IDs wrong, you gotta understand, I received them a long time ago. This is one of the EPC Lacunosas. I will put the EPC number. Of course, it rooted in the wrong place, but there are some roots here, so we just need to pot it at this point. This is Mindorensis. It, again, barely rooted on the bottom. It has long roots on the top. This is why I don't love the perlite method. Stuff just roots in the wrong place. And then we have this Arnotiana. That's a long root, as we can see. It's Arnotiana. And I don't really know. And I might just cut them into two. Of course, I have not prepared my scissors. Getting both pairs of my scissors because I will lose one of them in the process. So this is not great. It's a plant I received recently. And essentially that did not live. This is one of the cuttings of my Bengua tenses that is for sale. But I think that person probably is no longer interested because she asked for that cutting ages ago. Now here, what is this? I have no idea who these are. All right, so I don't have IDs on these, but I think some of these could be Rosita. I actually have to check on my phone because I got these from a friend. So I should have Rosita Odorata Lacunosa Silver. Lacunosa EPC 943, Kenegiana, and Pan Choi. This could be Pan Choi. And I think I have two. For this is Pan Choi. I will ask her if she sent me two. They look identical to me. I guess these leaves are smooth. So this could be Bilobata because Pan Choi, now I remember the story, is diversifolia. So this is most likely Hoya Bilobata. I am having a hard time figuring out these leaves. I don't think they're pubescent, maybe slightly fuzzy. It's not species of Antibertonia for sure. And then I think this is, we have the Kinegiana here, which is somewhat rooted, not extremely well. This is the inner variegated one. She said this plant needs saving. Um, her plant was not doing well either, the mother plant. So we only have this one opportunity. And then this is the Odorata, I think, which considering how much it's rooted, I might actually cut her in a couple of cuttings. So you can see they've been in here for a long time. Silver Lacunosa, my original Silver Lacunosa is from her and unfortunately I killed that one due to my negligence. This is another one that I got, which will be hopefully better this time. And then another Lacunosa, this one is EPC 943, what was it? 943, okay, 943. So we're going to pot those. I don't even know, are you going to see me potting? I think so. And then these are some of my rescues. What are these? Oh, these are also some of my rescues. Great. Ooh, hoo -hoo, baby. Okay, this is one is not rooting that well. This is from Farah. I am so sorry not to see this one root. I just think, yeah, the bottom has rotted off. I think risking this bottom leaf, because we do have an aerial root here, but I do think I will need to pot it in order to get something from it. This is one of my Pistolepis. This one I also put for sale or cut for sale. I will just pot this and let it grow out until it looks decent. And then my rescue from Hoya Lee, or sorry, this is Yunanensis. Oof, looking rough. Some of them are looking rough. I think I will just pot them and see what the good God gives them. Some have rooted, but not all. So this is rotten. So far we have only one that has rooted and maybe we can fish out another one. We have another cutting here. This rotted in pond. I think I will ask for a cutting from my friend again. Okay, this is cutting from Betsy. This is Juan Misty that I'm saving for the God knows what time. So I'm gonna risk the bottom node. I'm gonna try to save it, but I'm not holding out for much hope for this one. And to be honest with you, I never really loved it either. My first Sulawesiana that never grew, I might just not continue saving this one. It 
keeps rotting. And now I have a second one. So I might just not even bother with this cutting. I just really doubt that it will even grow. And then this is Puber from my friend Carolina. This one has rotted, but now it has rooted. So I'm gonna keep it. We have some Undulata too, but we're not gonna talk about that now. I think I'm gonna save that for a different video. And these are some Caudata cuttings that were ugly. This is sort of rooted, but also super dehydrated and yellow. So I'm not really sure what to do with that. This is rooted, okay. So some of these are actually worth potting, like that one. And this one, I will attempt. This one on the bottom, which had the most moisture, has the smallest roots. Um, let's see, we have perlite all over the phone. That is what they intended us to use our phones for. Let's cut what I want to cut into several pieces so they have time to sort of dry out before potting. So, Arnotiana. We need to start potting and who shall be first? Maybe I want to cut this to get a bushier plant. Do I want to cut this? I feel it would be such a waste not to cut it because almost at every node we have the roots. That's enough of chopping me around. I will drill holes into the sides of these or actually melt them, but for now I'm not going to do that. For now I'm just gonna put the cuttings in these. Shh, shut up. In either coconut husk or perlite. I have perlite there. I might put some bark as well. So I will put leca on the bottom to sort of mimic self-watering. Don't know how much leca. Let's see, that's enough. Let me just adjust my camera there a bit and let's begin. This took way too long for me to actually start doing this. This is going to be Hoyla Kunosa and the cutting is lost here. Let's do two Lacunosa first. Where's the second one? Here it is. Since we're gonna do Lacunosa first, I think Cocoa Peat and Perlite will serve us well because Lacunosa is generally non-finicky plant. We'll just put some bark there on the bottom so we have a barrier from that Leca. Feels weird putting directly Cocoa Peat on Leca. Let's just put that like this. Don't know what you can see. When I become rich, I will buy a second camera and then you can see multiple angles. Oh no, is this broken pot? So I'm just gonna write the ID because <laughs> this one's easy, this one we know. So we're gonna be brave and write the ID. As I'm going to forget, this is Huela Kunosa. One done, so many more to go. Poor little baby. I feel like we should establish here some consistency. The planning thing, let's talk about that and why I think I over plan. And I don't think I am, act well, I am a bit unrealistic when it comes to things that I, you know, can accomplish in a day. But I honestly think the reason for that is because this is not a new thing. This has just always been the case with me. And I actually don't know how many of you struggle with this. Or if you do, maybe you don't. Maybe you just have a great opinion of yourselves. How dare you come here? But essentially, the struggle with me has always been that I'm not doing enough. That I'm not doing enough, that I am not accomplishing enough, and really in general, that the things that I do are not good, which is ridiculous. I mean, it's like overachieving, right? But slightly more complex th than that, it's this putting unrealistic expectations and unrealistic pressure on yourself and thinking that people expect things from you that they actually don't and they never voiced that, but for whatever reason, you just think that. And I think for me, it's because some people in the past, let's say in the family, have had great expectations. I think those expectations got fulfilled, if you ask me. Hold on, which side can I write on? And this is EPC, EPC what 943. You're gonna love it here. So the, the, the thing with the expectations, let's get back to that. But first, let's fill this with laka, cause noise. For the next one, I think I'm just gonna do a combination of moss and bark. 
which is a mix I used to use. This moss is a bit too wet, so I'm just going to squeeze the excess moisture out. Make sure that it's fluffy. And I'm not gonna, I don't use much moss. It's sort of like too wick through bark. The expectation stuff, the expectations that were put on me were fulfilled. I did finish, I have a master's degree in architecture, but even like then in architecture school, me and my best friend were at top of our class, like the top two students at architecture school here. And even then I felt like I was failing and not doing things well, which is not realistic view of myself at all because I did, I had like a scholarship, several scholarships nationwide, but I just always felt like I'm not doing something enough, that I'm not doing well enough. And so this is definitely not something new, like this sense that I'm not accomplishing things enough. And I think that's why I tend to put so many things on my like to-do list. I'm like analyzing myself publicly here. Let's just write the tag first. And like, don't think of this, it's not a complaint. I'm not complaining. I'm just, you know, let's have a talk. This is what this video is. Let's, let's have a talk. And I just feel really bad. First of all, when I see those empty spaces, I'm like, you really could be doing more. This is why such and such thing in your life isn't going according to your plan. It's because you have this block of time that you didn't use. And that's like, it's not that. It's really not that. This is another lacunosa. Unfortunately, this one has not rooted so well, and there is this bare stem that has roots. I don't know why this one has refused to root. I'll just pot it and hope for the best. This is also an EPC number, but I forgot which one. I might be able to check. EPC 103. I absolutely forgot where I am in my story, by the way. Yeah, I think this is why I tend to overplan. I just think that I need to be doing more constantly. I think I need to be doing more and that I'm not doing enough. There's really no pride in that, first of all. There's really no pride in overworking yourself. Product of capitalism that we feel proud for overworking ourselves. And yeah, we should really just abandon that. Okay, my battery is almost empty, so I have to change it before we continue. These other batteries that, I'm, that I just put in, they last for a very short time, so we might not get to pot all of these before the batteries run out. Just a quick disclaimer here. Like, why is the, why do we have roots on top? We're gonna put this in cocoa husk. This is Hoya Misty. I also have found that Hoyas root really, really fast in cocoa husk. Recently I rooted some and I've just been having great success rooting Hoyas in coconut husk. So I might just put this one in a Ziploc bag a bit more just to get those roots going. Kind of buried that node just so I can get those roots in, but I left the leaf. I will add the tag later on that one because we're never gonna finish talking because it keeps stopping for one reason or another, but this has been really a very long learning process for me, I'd say several years. And it's just, uh, I, don't know, I, don't I don't like to call it an issue. Maybe it, it is sort of like some sort of an insecurity that I'm not doing enough. But you know, that's also okay because we all have those. We are all insecure about something. I think we all sort of build these false narratives about ourselves. Very few people don't. I mean, congratulations if you're one of the people who don't. Once again, how the F do I pot you? Why do you all root at the wrong spot? I'm just gonna cut this into two as well. Cause I just don't know what else I can do. The top sort of has good roots, the bottom doesn't. And now I realize this was a mistake. Now I cannot pot this because leaves are pointing down. That was dumb. Well, we're gonna just figure out that later. <laughs> oh my God, this is like so bad. Can I pot this one? I think I can. Arno Tiana, I think. Once again, you don't really see me putting the potting mix and I'm so sorry. I also just wanna say like people who comment, first of all, thank you for the comments, but if you notice that I made a mistake in a video, like not showing you the good angle. I know, I am aware of the mistake by the time I post it, not at the time of recording, cause you don't always really see everything in the viewfinder, but by the time I post it, 
I realize it because guess what? I've been editing the video for 10 hours, so I know. And I get frustrated by it, but you're really, your only option here is that I don't post it. And listen, I can start doing that too. <laughs> I don't, I really don't mind. It's just not so easy. I have to put this someplace. And if someone tells me get, get a desk for potting, there's no space here, okay? Nothing will fit anymore here. The camera and all of it, just nothing fits. Anyways, back to the topic. Tell me, does anyone else, like, do you do this? Do you tend to struggle with actually viewing your time in a re realistic way? I mean, I know that I'm not the only one. You're never the only one struggling with something. Also, another thing when it comes to that, that is actually pretty difficult for me to get over, is scheduling in time that is like downtime. Big, big struggle there. I, I mean, I think, I don't think I scheduled downtime this week at all. Where's my planner? Because I never do. Saturday, no. Sunday, nope. Currently, like Saturday and some, Sunday are empty, but I also know that I will absolutely be either editing something or filming something if I have the time. Or cleaning. I also love that I put every day clean, clean, clean. It is almost six o'clock and I am on task number one for today which is filming this, this segment. I also have to film another short video, it was a requested video, edit, study, and film watering and clean. 6 p.m. Do you think I did this well? I don't think we were very realistic, so some of these are gonna be probably moved. I just also, like, when I, when I schedule the downtime, I get this sense of guilt. Like, you could be doing more. Like, you complain you don't have time to do things, but here you are, taking a break. So what I will usually do, which is, I don't recommend this. This is not, this is none of these are tips. These are the traps that you shouldn't fall into. I actually do think you should take time to recharge, which is what I tell to all of my friends when, you know, they come to me and they say how they are exhausted. I'm like, you should just take it easy. Take it easy, you, you deserve a break. But will I listen to my own advice? Absolutely not. My advice does not apply for me or does not apply to me. It only applies to other people. Not to me, mm -mm. I don't deserve it. Well, this is just awkward, isn't it? You will have to fit in one way or another. I'm plotting this one as if I will never ship it. Do I plan not to sell this one, even though I have a big plant? Oh, you know what? I do have a Hoya here. Oh, don't look at this, this is terrible. I need to pot this one. My silver lady, which is looking absolutely horrible. That top is dying, so let's just cut that back. I need to pot this ASAP. Dehydrated, absolutely destroyed. I don't know, I feel like I'm rambling in the, at this point and I should probably like stop rambling, but I don't know. I would just like to know if any of you feel like this. What are you doing to kind of allow yourself more time. For sure a bunch of people are struggling with this. And I think it's also because of the hustle cu culture that we think we are not allowed to have free time and that the only way to achieve something is if you work hard. They, they say it for all the things, but it's really so untrue. For example, YouTube, you know, like consistency, consistency, consi it's not true. It's a lie. It is a lie. You can be consistent and it's not going to change much. It will ultimately be luck. Sue me, I don't care. It's the truth. It will only work a little bit, but at the end of the day, like whether your video is gonna get shown, I feel is luck. Oh, you know what I hate? I hate people giving you, like pretending they have all the answers and giving you all the answers when they don't. Like just stop faking it. I know you don't. When this tip of yours doesn't work, like I'm gonna know. I'm gonna know. See, you know, you should have stopped me. You should have stopped me cutting these Hoyas because now I can't pot these cuttings. They're, no. Why didn't you stop me? Why are you just sitting there and watching this downfall of mine? This is just not working out. Okay, I think after this one, I'll have to end this segment because I really just have to hurry up here. Clearly, I have ran out of the rambling topics now until we come to the next segment which there will be a next segment believe me so anyways got rid of my air raids someone asked for an air raid tour and i got rid of my air raids not all of them i still have some of them but i don't think enough for a tour i think i have like seven are gonna be left 
ish, seven ish, eight ish maybe. I don't think more than 10. There shouldn't be more than 10. So, you know, I don't think we're gonna get, we're gonna have an aeroid tour. I apologize. I just had to let go of some of the plants. Like this weekend, I was spraying my big aeroids and that was definitely not a priority task. I had in my, where is my, again, planner. In my planner, I sort of put that task last week into in non-urgent but important. So I was really not supposed to do it because I also didn't complete all of my urgent tasks. I mean, I did actually in the end. And I just knew I had to do this because some of them had mites and like they were here in the room and I just, I had to do it, the task, even though it was not the highest priority because in my head, it's like, it was just a constant reminder that I'm not doing well, right? And I mean that in a way, like I'm not achieving all the tasks that I want to achieve, you know, in that sense. Um, I was not doing well. So it was a reminder of that. And I was just like, I want this gone. I want this reminder. First of all, I want to do this, but also then I want them gone because clearly it's too much work. It's too much work to have 300 and something Hoyas, possibly 400. I keep saying 300, but that's very, you know, very conservative number. This really was a bad idea, cutting these into such small cuttings. Again, I will leave a small number of them and I don't, I'm not saying I'm never gonna have aeroids in the future. I just really need them gone for now. And you know, sometime down the line, if I decide that I want to grow them again, I will be able to get them. And some of the very popular ones are going to, like my Dean McDowell that everyone was like, ah, in love with me too. It's, it just has to go. There is no space for it. I keep finding different spots for him. I cannot find a spot where he should live. So it has to go. Like. Right now, there are three big ones behind you, behind the camera, and one of those, Jerry Horn, I am gonna cut that one as soon as they have time and sell it or gift it, whatever. And then El Chaco is also leaving me, the big one, the only one, actually. That one is going to my friend because we own the plant together and now she's gonna take it again. She doesn't have much space, but you know, sorry. I actually have two more anthuriums, three. I'm gonna keep those, potentially five. And I have my Florida Beauty and my Jose Bonos. Actually, there, there is, maybe there will be an aerate tour. I don't know. I need to get them in a, in a state first where the other ones look great. The big ones that look great, they still look great. Actually, I think only one had mites and that's the El Chaco and only the bottom plant because it started to grow a small plant. So I sprayed him. The rest of them are fine. And my painted lady got to be 2.5 meters tall and she's, she's like a year and a half, maybe two years old, not even that, from a small plant. Same with Dark Lord, that one is two meters, also a favorite of mine. This this wasn't anything to do with the rarity. It was like all the plants that I bought, the plants that were gifted to me, those are staying, those aeroids are staying, because that's a different story, but just the ones that I got, like I got them, I grew them, and now it's time for them to go. And I'm gonna actually get rid of some of the Hoyas, my Densifolia is going, and a couple of others are going to just leave. Probably more verticillatas will go. You know, that was one example of me doing this task that is not high priority, but it needed to be done because I just needed, to, uh, and I think this is actually good. If you have something that's like really bothering you, like that was really, really bothering me that I was not finishing that task, really on my mind, I was like, okay, that that's, we need to do it. We need to do it, we need to finish it, because if I don't, it will just, constantly be on my mind. Also, that's sort of like with cleaning. I do love to clean, I do love to clean. That's why I said cleaning every day here. When it's cluttered, it's just very difficult. You know, if you're an anxious person, it just makes you even more anxious. At least in my case, it makes me even more anxious. My point is sometimes it is also good to do the tasks that maybe are not priority, but if you do them a lot, you know, you will just clear your mind. It will clear your mind a lot. That is my at least belief. I need to get more laca. I need to go and actually buy a pump sprayer because my broke. I have a couple of cuttings here in these boxes, so I will go through those as well and just somehow manage to do the rest of the tasks. So I can cross up the filming and not much else. This honestly might be mites in my corporatory. It's not looking great. I don't know if you can see that. That's pretty yellow on all the leaves. That still looks okay. 
Hello. <laughs> it is the tent that needs to be watered, and it is I, Leclerc. <laughs> if you have not seen Alo Alo, what are you doing with your life? Hi, it's me, Rope. <laughs> Imagine if I never introduced myself in my videos, and I just introduced myself like just midway, and people who don't watch the video until the end, they will just never know what my name is. Actually, no, then they call me, even, even now they call me Basie. No, no, that's a bad idea. Anyways, we have to water the plants. I don't know where that accent came from, but certainly did not come from any normal place. So I need to take all the plants out. Essentially, when I water these tents, I take all the plants out. And that doesn't happen too frequently. The reason for that is because I, you know, I need to take the plants out of their pots and fill the reservoirs. That's the way that I water. Sometimes I top water when I am very busy, which is now. I don't know why I'm not doing that right now, to be quite frank with you, but... All right, we have decided to go this route. I have watered a couple of those. Surisana, I have watered her. She's doing better-ish. She needs a repot. That's not today. The plan was to do this last night. Clearly, I have not done it. Simply, you know, last night, it was nighttime. I went to bed at like 2.30, it was almost three. So that's not too bad, five hours of sleep. We love it, should get more because yesterday I had more plants to repot and that just took a lot of time. And the cleanup took a lot of time. Why are you still not? This should go to the trash. This should have been repotted a long time ago. Like the person who is in charge of repotting is not taking things seriously here. I'm gonna put my headphones in and listen to some music because I just need to stop talking. Shut up, Miro. If anyone is interested, I'm listening to The Pierces and the album is called Creation. I love this album. Why did you crawl in between the vines, in between the vines? I should also treat these plants preventatively for mites, but I just cannot. That's not gonna happen soon. Yeah. They're a little bit dusty, but not too much because they are in the tent, but still dust finds its way in. This plant, seriously, if she does not bloom soon, I will lose my mind. I know I said I was gonna shut up, but I lied. Like, this is a big plant. Let's measure her from here to here. I think that's a lot. It's actually a meter, one entire meter. <laughs> So you can get a sense how big this is. From here to here, she is one meter. I had no idea. Girl, what's up? I do think I should repot this Frank Sen to something different. I, I think this retains a bit too much water. I have plants in Coco Peat and Perlite and in self-watering and they do well but they dry out much quicker than this one. So this plant is probably not as thirsty. So I think I just need to change the mix there because I like to water them. I like to water them on the same schedule. I'm just gonna leave this unwatered at this point. This girl is very dry and I will actually take this to the shower because she's very dry to really, really thoroughly soak the mix. And then I will fill the reservoir, but in a couple of days, it will be gone. It's just a very thirsty plant. Okay, I'm actually gonna listen to music. That's a little bit too much water. Okay, sorry, another thing that I need to add, like this Vitalina, bone dry, has been watered at the same time. Okay, she's a bigger plant than Ranksen, so that's why, but she just drinks a lot of water. I just love her, Vitalina. Who wouldn't? Like. She is gorge. I know you have just seen my Hoya tour, so you don't actually need this. I'm gonna rip out your today, cause I heard you like a big pot and... Ow, ow, ow. Oh no. My hair got caught in a Hoya. It is 11 
and I'm listening to Fern, Wild Fern, organizing, and I think you guys should reorganize. Blame Fern. direction with this plant. Girls are heavy when they are watered. <sighs> I feel like, like you need to be in the tent. Let me try to get you inside the tent. Chances that you're gonna fall are very high. So if you do fall, I do apologize. I never meant to hurt you. I have decided. My mind is made up. I'm gonna restart my reindeer aflasia so she can look hot and sexy. I keep hitting things. I cannot put this because I need to water these three. Let's just see what's up with my Meredithy. I might even restart her. She has grown to be unruly. I think she's not liking something. Maybe she, I just need to put her in a different trellis. Sometimes all you need to do with a Hoya is change your perspective a bit. Is this better? Oh, disgusting. See, she's just like, what the heck is happening? She doesn't look so good because I keep putting her on this power trellis and it's not working. I think she's, she needs to be put on something else. And these leaves didn't fall off either. They just didn't grow yet. Now let's just be careful because they did break a couple of gorgeous leaves recently by jamming her in there. Also. Let's try not to break the pedunculus. I'm sorry, the lights are on. I'm doing this, but I obviously cannot put a light here. Obviously. There, I, I can barely fit. I actually don't know how I'm going to leave. Okay, it's slightly better, right? It's slightly better. I think we can do a hoop-ish or a ladder thing. Make sure to really crowd yourself with Hoyas so you don't know what are you even doing. Am I trellising this Hoya? Is it a different way that I'm trellising? Okay, I think we need to untangle this a little bit. She's also quite moist. I think we need a different potting mix for her too. She does like to stay moist though. Make sure to also have the Hoya face you. Because, you know, tip number million, if you don't see what you're doing, you don't know what you're doing. What is actually going on? You know, this is not gonna look good. I think in the end I'm just going to restart this plant. Do you even see what I'm doing? I'm now annoyed that this vine exists. It is really that this Hoya would probably benefit from a trellis or like from something that's taller. I think like for these leaves to properly develop, it also just needs the support of, you know, grabbing hold of something. I think that's like also one of the issues here. I successfully broke off a peduncle which took years to grow. Sad. I do like that slightly better, but I'm not promising that I'm not gonna cut her. I do believe we do have root issues. And you know what? I, was this transferred from Pawn? I don't remember. No, this was transferred from Latka. Now I want to, to pull her out and just check on the roots real quick there. Those look... Hmm. Shit on my face. They don't look that great, but I am noticing some issues with the roots and I will need to take care of that. Okay. Well, she's actually doing pretty great. I'm gonna look at those roots. I'm gonna look at those roots and decide if I'm going to chop her. So for now, we did this and we're just gonna let her be. So, just fit. Well, that's not really gonna work for me. So she's taking more space than she used to. Let's untangle these. It's midnight. This plant is not the best grower for me. I find this very hard, very difficult to grow. It's a very unwilling plant. 
I don't think she has mites. I just never... I think I should... Okay, the roots are fine. I don't know. I just find her pretty unwilling. It is the Peninsularis. She's like three years old, I think. She just kept growing and dying back. She's been sprayed for mites oh so many times. But I don't think it's that. Not a great grower for me. I really struggle with this plant. That doesn't mean it's difficult. It just means she hates me. I mean, Callistophila hates me, so, you know, I know that Callistophila loves some people. Don't love me. I don't think I'm gonna have time tonight for the top level, honestly. Or I will just shut up and not record that. And I do have to put Hoyas in water, the cuttings that I received, which, if you follow me on Instagram, you have, you will have seen. This one has not been in pawn, but it has been in semi-hydro. Yeah, I don't think these roots are the best. I think I will cut this and restart the plant. It's not rotting, but it's not thriving either. So I will also not water her. At least they got some leaves here. So I am less worried about restarting her now versus before where I was like, I really just don't want to mess with her. Now I'm like, you know what? We're going to do some stuff to you and you're going to like it. Why do I say deranged things? Let's see. Can she fit? The real issue is Meredithi is now taking up a lot of space. And I just don't think that we can have that as is. Something will need to change here on this shelf because there is like a lot of empty space behind Meredithi. Ow! Dear God, where do I put her? Don't like her, honey. Okay, I'm gonna put you here. Of course, now there isn't space somehow magically, even though she did fit right there. Oh, I forgot that I need to trellis this. I literally started to trellis Hoya Hippolasia and apparently I just gave up. So I put everything back. I did not realize I wasn't recording. So I was talking to myself for a moment. I mean, I am talking to myself anyways here. So who am I kidding? There is this Hoya that needs to find a way to grow more compact because she really is getting so big and you know, she's getting damaged because of lack of space i have an issue it's called having too many hoys here it is time to finish this video i did plan to include a lot more footage and a lot more chores but once again i don't think i was very realistic because as is this video is very long we will definitely be continuing with the chores and there will be again a lot more videos similar to this where I do a lot of chores and let me know if you just liked some of these ramblings. I would like to hear your feedback and I would like to hear your thoughts and maybe they will inspire me to talk about something else in the videos. If you did like the videos make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and don't forget to leave a comment below and I will see you very soon in the next video and until then, well just enjoy your Hoyas. I would like to take some time to thank all of my patrons for their incredible support. A special shout out to Youth of the Walmut for her incredibly generous contribution this month. Thank you so much. It, it's just incredible and amazing. You are amazing. Massive shout out to my $5 patrons. My two anonymous patrons, Alex von Siebenthal, Amber Clear, and margaret Moen, Angela Bernard, Angela Parrish, and C. Ashley Hoyas, Beth Gibson, Betsy, Buji Panda, Catherine Molina, Christy Claire Cola, Daniela, Danube Daniels, Daria Kaminska, Diane Sikorsky, Dipanjali, Rao Farah, Gina K, Gina Geise, Go Green Tropical, Heather Uppenkamp, Hoji Scott, Jamie Arsenault, Yana Griffin, Jessica Chia, Yavin Dinot, Kara, Catherine P, Casey Gross, Kelly Cool, Kelso, Kelly Gallagher, Kiwi Mochi, Christy Ehrlich, Leplan de Steph, Mandy Milliken, Marcel Har, Marcelino Vasansky, Mario West, Mars B, Martina, Alif Perday, Marty Miller, Mary Rose, Melissa Walker, Michael Curley, Michelle Heron, Nicole Ferranti, Moa Edmund, Neely Yang, Niha Basu, Neely Spicer, Nicole Moreau, Nicole and Caleb of Shalif Tropicals, Nina Nguyen, Nita Macy, PJ, Plant Red, Planting with Nat, Rachel Peterson, Robin L. Jennings, Robin Russo, Loma Dal, Sandra Cornelius, 
Sherry Kumar, Stephanie H2O, Sybil Williams, Tanya Tessa Martins, The One True Kyle, Tristan Thomas, Tia B, TJWO, Trista Bailey, Wendy, Wendy Foreman, Wendy Rossman, Zania Green, Youth of the Wallamut, and Zlok of Nipani. Also, big thank you to my $3 patrons. Andy H, Angelina Farnan, Anna K, Brenda Little, Colleen Coyle, Levi, Constance, Kellone, Claudia L, Erin Keenan, Catherine Parsons, Lindsay Ann, Lisa Helling, Nella, Nerdy Kathy, Plantelania, Ringlov, and Tang Watanas Cool. And a thank you to my $1 patrons Alice Borling, Carrie, Christina Greengrass, Couture Helvetica, EDW, Amelia Bronson, Joanna Pearson, Jolly Sullivan, Kayla Vavra, Kelly Ash, Chris Perez, Lauren M, Lori, and Subramanian, Musman Fernandez, Tracy the Eye Biller, and Olivia Chin Muller.